All right, it is Friday the 20th of December and we're gonna do something a little different today. Uh, one of the most common questions that we get this time of year is about uh, winter access to the boundary waters. Um, where can you park? Uh, what entry points are you know easily accessible? What entry points are harder to access? And we're gonna do a video tour of uh, the uh, accessible winter uh, entry points. And we're gonna start at the end of the Gunflint Trail and work our way back towards Mid Trail. And hopefully this will prove to be a valuable resource for uh, winter campers and not just people going overnight, but ice fishing for the day and things like that. So well, let's go. Right, we are coming up on Trails End Campground and we're going to talk about the Seagull Lake access that you can uh, use here and uh, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of that. Where you're going to park is this way, where you're going to access the lake is this way. Um, it's a loop so you got to drive this way um, and then walk up that way. This is the parking lot uh, that I just mentioned and it's uh, if you're going to use this access, which I'm going to discourage you from doing, um, but it's free country. Um, <laughs> this is where you're going to park your car is down here, and then you're going to end up walking up there uh, to actually access the lake. This is how you would access Seagull from the Trails End Campground. This is the uh, the boat access in the summer. Where you're going to park is down there, but I came from up here driving around but let's walk down there and talk about uh, the cons and the cons and maybe one pro of starting here all right here we are this uh, this is the landing um, to get to seagull you're gonna go straight that way and it's not too far but uh, it pops you out on the uh, kind of the north side of seagull a little ways past wilderness canoe base if you know where that is so the, the pro of using this uh, entry point here uh, in the winter would be that you're getting down the west end of Seagull faster than if you were to start at Blankenburg Landing. Um, the con, which I think is a pretty big con, is that you got to screw around uh, the riffle, which is the open water current section um, that is back here getting into Seagull Lake and it's always open. It never freezes over, the ice is never safe there. There's way too much current and there's frequently lots of bad ice, lots of slush and you gotta crawl around on shore around the bad ice and kind of up over a point and then head out down Seagull. And I personally don't think that is worth it, um, especially considering you don't wanna start your winter camping trip wet. Um, that would be a kind of a nightmare scenario. So. All right, here we are coming up to Seagull Lake Landing. This is the Blankenburg Landing, and the road is the Seagull Lake Access Road right across from Seagull Creek Fishing Camp. Here's the parking area for Blankenburg Landing at Seagull. Um, the lake access is behind me there, um, or, <laughs> or that way. There's also a uh, toilet here. And this is the preferred Seagull Lake access, in my opinion. Uh, this is plowed out by the county, and there's room for a bunch of vehicles in here. And the access is easy. Uh, the road in is easy. And it puts you on kind of this end of Seagull here is the far uh, eastern end of Seagull Lake. All right, we are coming up on the Moose Pond landing on Saginaw Lake is one of two landings you can use in the winter. You're looking for County Road 81 and a lot of people will refer to it as the Moose Pond Road. This is the very very end of the SAG corridor right here and if you're going to use this to access SAG you're gonna start out here and go straight up the corridor. Um, there is some pretty good parking back around here uh, for quite a few vehicles, but you always want to be careful because uh, if you're here for a couple nights and it snows a foot, 
you want to make sure you consider that when you uh, park your vehicle because you can get in pretty big trouble. We're coming up on the uh, other landing for Saginaw Lake and this is Sag Lake Trail which is County Road 83 um, and what you're looking for is the sign for Voyager Canoe Outfitters and Sag Lake Trail. So this is the Sag Lake Trail, uh, Saginaw Landing here. There's a bunch of parking over here. And here's the lake. The landing, the other landing, Moose Pond, is that way. And Sag is that way. Um, if you're going up on Sag, this will save you <laughs> about maybe at the most a half mile of the corridor. You're farther farther up the corridor here. Um, in the winter, you'll see a sign here that says fee required at time of parking vehicle. Um, you need to pay to park here in the summer. You don't need to pay here to park in the winter. Um, this is free and the county plows this out and it's a nice public landing. There's you know, lots of room to park and uh, same thing goes for Moose Pond for SAG. Um, the county plows it and they take good care of it and if you're uh, gonna access Saginaga, either one is a good option. All right, Round Lake Road, Missing Link Entry Point and Brant Lake Entry Point. It is uh, County Road 47. So if you drive in about three quarters of a mile on the Round Lake Road, this is the Round Lake Road here that goes out towards the Gunflint Trail. You will find this parking area here. Uh, the county plows this up about 300 feet. There's a big snow berm right here. This is the public access road for Round Lake. Um, and you can park here and walk down the road to get to the lake and into the Boundary Waters. There's almost always a nice packed trail uh, that goes along here. Another option is to give us a call. Uh, we do let people park at our place if they're, um, if we're going to be around and if we have the room. Uh, it's something you need to set up in advance, but uh, you know, more often than not, we're glad to help you. All if you are going camping on uh, Duncan or Daniels, this is what you want. It's County Road 21. And what you're looking for are the signs for Hungry Jack Lodge, Hungry Jack Outfitters, and Camp Minoja. When you're driving in on the uh, Hungry Jack Road here, you're going to come to a Y, and you want to make sure you take the left. So you're going towards Hungry Jack Lodge. Well, so you drive in on the Hungry Jack Road, and you will find yourself at this little parking lot here. And there's a National Forest kiosk. Entry points 60 and 61. We are on the um, western end of West Bearskin. And right down through there is West Bearskin. And across you go to either Duncan or Daniels. So if you are going to use the Clearwater entry point, you're going to find County Road 22, but a much easier thing to look for is uh, the big signs for Golden Eagle Lodge and Clearwater Lodge. A word of warning, if you have a minivan with bald tires, this is not the road for you. This is uh, quite the trek back here to uh, the uh, parking lot for Clearwater. are going to access South Lake via Topper. Here is where you want to park. This is the parking lot at the Mayhew Lake Road. This is the uh, parking lot at the Mayhew Lake Road. It's just a, a lot plowed right off the Gunflint Trail, which is right there. Uh, this is how you access South Lake. Um, back behind me over here, there's a uh, snowmobile trail that takes you to uh, basically to right before Topper 
and then you enter the wilderness area, go across Topper, and then down the big hill into south. Um, this parking lot right here, uh, you definitely want to make sure you park smart. Uh, don't block people in and, you know, make as little impact as possible. Really hug into the side and stuff like that. This gets, uh, it gets a goodly amount of use and it can get kind of crowded in here and you got to be careful. If you've got a big four-place snowmobile trailer, this is not the place for you. Actually, almost any trailer uh, coming here is going to be pretty tough, especially on the weekends. Uh, but if you just got a car or a truck, you should be pretty good. County Road 92, Poplar Lake Public Access. So when you turn into the Public Lake Access Road for Poplar, this is what you find. Uh, big plowed up snow berm. There is room here for maybe two cars, but keep in mind that this is someone's driveway and they live back there so you can't block that in. My big truck takes up three quarters of it. So um, you want to be careful here. Uh, probably the best thing to do is to call Trail Center, call Rockwood um, businesses on Poplar Lake and see what they have to say about winter parking. They might have some options for you because in here uh, it's really tight, it's cramped, and you don't want to end up blocking someone in or getting really, really stuck if uh, a bunch of snow falls while you guys are out on your trip. Let's talk about entry point 64, East Bearskin. You know you're there for the East Bearskin Road when you see the sign for Bearskin Lodge. So if you drive down the East Bearskin Road, you will find yourself at this little funny Y here. Um, the road ends right there where my truck is, and then this is the road here that goes into Bearskin Lodge. And if you are going to uh, want to use entry point 64 in the winter for winter camping, you want to talk to Bearskin. Uh, they maintain this road in the winter, they plow it, um, they take care of it, so you definitely want to talk to them. Um, they do provide some parking uh, for winter campers, is what I heard from Quinn at, at Bearskin here just a minute ago. So uh, if, you're, if you're in this area looking to do some winter camping, Bearskin Lodge, give them a call. We are going to pull into the South Gruel Solonville Trail parking lot here and we're going to talk about uh, Boundary Waters Entry Points Bower Trout, Ram, and Morgan and the access to those. And why are we pulling into a Solonville Trail parking lot? Um, I'll hop out of the car here and I'll tell you. This is a nice big parking lot right past the South Brule, primarily used the Stoneville Trail access, but um, if you have a Stoneville, you can use this to access uh, Bower Trout, Ram, and Morgan if you're going uh, to those entry points in the winter. And this is, there's another option we'll look at here in a minute, but this is the best option most of the time. Um, there's a lot of factors that play into accessing these in the winter um, logging and the snowmobile trails and things like that. Um, but if you start here and you get on the snowmobile trail and you take the snowmobile trail up to the South Brule Road, which is just right up the road a little ways off the snowmobile trail, and it is not plowed, then you can take the South Brule Road to the Lima Grade and that is how you access um, those entry points in the winter. It's a long ways. It's, this is snowmobiles we're talking about here. Um, you could ski, but it's like 15 miles. Um, maybe a little less than that, but around maybe 10, 15 miles. Um, if the South Brule Road is plowed, then you need to stay on the snowmobile trail uh, until it hits the Lima grade. And that's going to wind around a ways and take a lot longer, but um, if, they're if they're logging on the South Brule Road and they plow it, you're not supposed to ride snowmobiles on there. And I wouldn't because you don't want to, you know, meet a big logging truck that's coming barreling down there. There is another option, um, and we're going to go look at that. It's sometimes an option and sometimes not, once again based on logging activity and plowing.
All right, here is the second option for Ram and Bauer Trout and Morgan, and let's talk about it. All right, this is the direction to Grand Marais. Right up here is, uh, right over that hillside, is the North Brule River, and this is Forest Service Road 152, and it is a possible sometimes access point for uh, Bower Trout, Ram, and Morgan. And just like with uh, the South Rule Big parking lot there, the same thing goes about uh, plowing and logging traffic. So if there isn't any logging traffic right behind me here, this will be plowed shut. So there'll be a parking lot where I'm standing in a big berm of snow, and you can park here and access uh, those entry points. Uh, this road tees into the Lima grade, and it, uh, it's not too far. It's maybe three or four miles, and it tees in there. And depending on which entry point you want to go to, you can go either direction. Um, you can ski. It's a long ways, so this is more for people that have snowmobiles. Um, however, if this is plowed, they're logging in there, and you want to go back down to the South Pool. You don't want to block this. Um, because they would not take that very kindly. Um, so that's the reality of these entry points. Um, in my opinion, without machines, these are not accessible entry points in the winter. Uh, you gotta go long, long ways before you even enter the wilderness area. So um, these are not the best places for winter camping. There are, there are better options, easier options.